Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning, to begin my Dharma message, please join me in God's show, put your hands together. Shakamuni and Amida. Oh. Shakamuni and Amida are our father and our mother, full of love and compassion for us. Guiding us through various skillful means, they bring us to awaken the supreme Shinjin. Namo Amida Butz, Namo Amida Butz, Namo Amida Butz, Namo Amida Butz, Namo Amida Butz. Again, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming to this Sunday service this morning, and a happy Bodhi Day today. Uh, well, the, before I go into my Dharma message, uh, I hope all of you get uh, one tea bag. Uh, that's a from, gift from Japan. My wife uh, brought uh, those. That's 100 different kinds of tea. So all different. So. I hope you pick your favorite tea, but it is really difficult to find out which one is which. Uh, well, then if you, I think we have more extra tea, so if you, well, like a Dharma school student coming later, or you know, the scouts group, those who come to only scouts, uh, or uh, if you see some other your friends like a Gojikai, BWA, uh, Taiko, uh, book study group, so please take some extra tea back to your friends, then please uh, give it to them. To, that's uh, some, just a you know, small gift from us to express our appreciation to all of you. It's a small gift from Japan. So today is a body day. So after a body day, it is said December when? 8th, December 8th. <laughs> Please remember the day, December 8th is a body day. So this is the day Shakamuni Buddha Gautama Siddhartha attain enlightenment and becoming a Shakamuni Buddha. That's a day of body day, December 8th. So please remember that. So on this occasion, I would like to review the Shakamuni Buddha's life, just a little bit. Briefly, I'd like to review the Shakamuni Buddha's life. Shakamuni Buddha is a historical Buddha. So he was born in Lumbini Garden. Uh, it is said, you know, almost a border of India and Nepal today, They're about 25 or 2600 years ago. So he was born as a prince Siddhartha, Gautama Siddhartha. So he was a prince of the country. Then you may heard the story of this excursion from the four gates, the short trip from north, uh, east gate, south gate, north gate, and west gate. So I won't go into the, the detail of this story today, then, but through that experience, he realized the human sufferings. So uh, everybody becomes, get old, then everyone gets sick, then everybody die one day. So he realized oh, everybody has a, a pain or sufferings of uh, those uh, getting old, sickness, and death. Then also he met a monk who is, uh, whose attitude was noble and dignified. So he met someone is different from himself or other people. So it is said that Prince Siddhartha decided to become a monk on that day. So the later, one, one, uh, one book says when he was 16 years old, he married with a woman. Her name is called Yashodara. Yashodara. Then he had a son. Uh, his name is Rafra. So he lived a very, Shakamani Buddha, you know, as a prince, he lived a very uh, luxury, leisurely, and pleasant life in the palace as a prince. Then he also rejoiced at the birth of his son, Lafla, but 
he, you know, he already made a resolution to become a monk. So then he started uh, having a concern. He couldn't avoid thinking that the child was another obstacle to his spiritual quest, spiritual path. So then the baby was given the name Rafra, which means, it is really interesting, but Rafra means obstacle. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, yeah, that's a good to remember. He has a son, his name is Rafra, which means obstacle. Then his concern was, you know, how he can overcome Shakamuni Buddha's, or oh, Gautama Siddhartha's concern was how he can overcome his suffering. Suffering means getting old, aging, sickness, and death, and how he can be happy. That was his uh, great concern. So of course he, en he enjoyed his life in the palace. However, he felt like there was something missing in his everyday life. So at the age of 29 years old, he left his palace to seek his answer. It was common at that time, like a warrior's family on these days, uh, you know, someone left the family behind, then his, you know, the extended family continued to care for his family, his wife and child. So after, at the age of 29, Gautama Siddhartha left the palace, then he visited several great teachers, master's place, to find his answer. However, he couldn't satisfy their guidance, then he couldn't get any answer to his questions. Then, uh, eventually, he joined a troop of five ascetics, those who were practicing in the mountain. Then, uh, he practiced with these five ascetics. Shakyamuni Buddha Gautama Siddhartha was so strict, so strict to practice, he limited his daily food portion of a meal of a grain of rice. Just one grain of rice, meal of grain of rice a day. So he, he tried to overcome his sufferings. Then he was too strict, then he was almost dead. He sometimes became unconscious. So it is said that his father, uh, King Sudondana, was once even notified of his death. So he practiced very hard for, with them, with five ascetics for six years. However, he couldn't find the answer to his question. Rather, he became a weaker and weaker because he didn't eat much. He realized that he would never attain awakening. He, he would never get the answer by following such a practice. So he stopped, he ceased practicing, and left that mountain. Then he washed himself in the river and accepted milk porridge offered by Sujata, uh, the daughter of a village elder. Then he regained his health and continued to his search. So he just sat under the body tree. It is also called Pippara. People. So the Bodhi tree in Gaya, nowadays it is called Buddha Gaya. So Buddha Bodhi tree, which we sang this morning, that's a Bodhi tree. So he vowed not to rise until he had attained awakening, getting the answer to his question. So he sat down under the Bodhi tree, he settled into a state of deep meditative calm and peace. So while he was meditating, it is said, it is called Mara. Mara appeared to hinder his meditation. So Mara means, uh, Mara means the bringer of the death, bringer of death, and one that symbolizes our mental and emotional attachments. That we call Mara. So Mara tried to cause, you know, being active, his 
three poisons, greed, anger, and ignorance, try to hinder his practice. So sometimes mother turn into the woman, then try to seduce him to stop uh, practicing and try to have fun. Let's enjoy, stop meditating. Sometimes Mara turn into the army demons, so attacking him, then try to uh, get him anger, then hatred and fear. So Mara is, to me, Mara is representing his or human's greed, anger, and ignorance. Although Mara tried to stop him meditating, he had never stopped meditating. Gautama Siddhartha then, it is said, touched the earth, ground with right hand, the calling on the very earth as witness in what has come to be known as earth touching gesture. The signaled Mara's defeat and Siddhartha's awakening. That was the uh, December 8th. So then he became a Gautama Siddhartha, attained the enlightenment, then uh, becoming a Shakyamuni Buddha 25, 2600 years ago. So this is a brief uh, life history of Shakyamuni Buddha. Then the Buddha, Shakyamuni Buddha, right after he attained the enlightenment, he spent, Shakyamuni Buddha spent some weeks enjoying the bliss of enlightenment, enjoying the Dharma by himself. He also felt hesitant to share what he awakened, Buddha Dharma, because it is too difficult for other people to understand what he had awakened. So he was just enjoying the enlightenment by himself. Then, the Hindu god, Brahma, appeared before Shakyamuni Buddha to ask him, requested him to teach the Dharma for other people, the people who need his guidance. So the Brahma, the Hindu god, asked him over and over again. They eventually he was convinced and visited the place where he used to practice with other five ascetics first. So when Shakyamuni Buddha visited the mountain where he used to practice and to meet with these five ascetics, first those five ascetics was told him, oh, you are a quitter. You quit the practice. You left, uh, you left this place. So he was kind of, uh, they tried to get out of uh, Shakyamuni Buddha from that place. But once they listened to Shakyamuni Buddha's guidance, uh, he, they became a disciple of Shakyamuni Buddha. It is the first Dharma message by Shakyamuni Buddha. It is said Shakyamuni Buddha uh, delivered the Four Noble Truths, Four Noble Truths and Eightfold Path at that time. So this is a brief uh, life history of Shakyamuni Buddha from his birth to his attaining enlightenment. So when I was preparing today's Dharma message, I also reviewed to study Shakyamuni Buddha's life. Then this, this was I truly appreciated. You know, he was, he could just enjoy himself, the Buddha Dharma. But uh, he didn't have to share the Buddha Dharma with other people, right? He just, he was able to enjoy himself because that was his personal question to himself. Why I am suffering? What is a uh, uh, suffering of uh, getting old, sickness, and death? Then he attained enlightenment, then he was able to find a path to liberate from these sufferings. But fortunately, Shakyamuni Buddha decided to share this guidance with other people. 
So to me, so sitting under the body tree, the first he practiced with five ascetics, then he was sitting under the body tree, then he defeated this Mara, greed, anger, ignorance, three poisons. To me, this is a self-practice, the path of sage, using self-power self to attain enlightenment. But he didn't stop that stage. He pursued uh, to continue sharing the Dharma with other people. He was attaining enlightenment at the age of 35, then he died at the age of 80. So the next 45 years, he traveled all over different places. So then he meet or he met all different people to share the guidance. So this is to me showing us the Bodhisattva's path. So benefiting other people. Then those who receive the benefit from Shakyamuni Buddha, so they following Shakyamuni Buddha's guidance, then they were able to attain enlightenment. So in Jodo Shinshu, well, all the Buddhists, we try to attain enlightenment. It is our goal to attain enlightenment. Of course, you know, if someone can try to follow the, what, how Shakyamuni Buddha attain enlightenment, that is great. You know, sitting under the body tree, then get rid of all the three poisons, all the attachment from my mind, from, from my heart, myself. If we can do, that's great, but not everyone can follow that. For those people who cannot attain enlightenment using my own self-power, Shakyamuni Buddha still guiding other people, guiding the path for other people. So that is the Nembutsu teaching for me, to me. So to attain enlightenment, to attain enlightenment, we have to, uh, Shakyamuni Buddha, as a Buddhist, Shakyamuni Buddha is uh, the goal or uh, Shakyamuni Buddha's life is our ultimate goal. So to, to, be, to be just like a Shakyamuni Buddha, we have to attain enlightenment. To be attain enlightenment, we have to get rid of three poisons. We have to uh, defeat the Mara. So to defeat the Mara, we have to attain the state of Nirvana. So to attain the state of Nirvana, you know, no, not everyone can do practice by themselves. So that's why Amida Buddha created the pure land, built a pure land for all of us to attain the Nirvana, to attain enlightenment. So also Amida Buddha uh, showing the path to, to born into the Amida Buddha's pure land. So there are all different paths to attain enlightenment. So at the beginning of today's uh, message, I uh, introduced our uh, founder Shinran Shonin's Wasan scheme. Shakamuni and Amida, our father and mother, full of love and compassion for us, guiding us through various skillful means. They bring us to awaken the supreme Shinjin. So Shakamuni Buddha also showing the path of sage, the path of the a way of the pure land. So the self-power practice and other power practice, benefiting myself and benefit, benefit from others. So using his entire life, he is showing uh, different paths to follow, different paths to attain enlightenment. So today was a body day. So following, you know, reviewing Shakyamuni Buddha's life so then we can think about our path to attain enlightenment, how we can attain enlightenment. This is the ultimate goal of Buddhist, all the Buddhist, not only Jodo Shinshu Buddhist, all the Buddhist ultimate goal is attaining enlightenment. So now today is a gr great opportunity for all of us to think how we can learn from the attaining enlightenment, how we can learn from Shakyamuni Buddha's life. So thank you for attending this service this morning. To conclude my Dharma message, please join me in Gashopu, put your hands together. 
ナモアミダブツナモアミダブツナモアミダブツナモアミダブツナマンダナマンダナマンダ